Well, I think this episode is going to be great. Sure. Uh, I'm going to Iron Walk after the taping if you want to join me. Uh, no thanks. I'm busy. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, me too, actually. Yeah. Sure you are. I know I'm usually more brash and stuff in front of the cameras, but uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, it's been really a great time working with you. Okay. Seems a little harsh. Wait, Noah, are we live right now? Well, the teleprompter's been going for the last five minutes, so yeah, probably. Uh, five minutes? Dude, you are supposed to tell me when things like this happen. I thought you knew already. How was I supposed to know? I was just busy beating my high score on Crossy Road. You were ignoring me so that you could play Crossy Road <laughs> on television? Yeah, of course. No one's played Crossy Road since 2015. Well, 2015 was a great year for me. 2015 was just average. It was better than now, so excuse me for trying to step out from under the crushing weight of societies today. Are you okay? No. Do you want to talk about it? No. The White House is outwardly editing film in order to revoke press passes. California is disintegrating, and I have a chronic ingrown toenail. And that's why you've been playing so much Crossy Road? Yes, that is why I've been playing so much Crossy Road. Well, what's your high score then? 1,769. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Well, what should we do? We should probably pick up wherever the teleprompter is. Uh, we, we can't come back from this, but we might as well not uh, mess up the rest of the show's timing. Aye, aye. I am not a captain. Oh, um. <laughs> Noah, you're so silly, but the EP said there will be no more break-in in the studio. We just can't handle another electri electric boogaloo incident, you know? Hey. You will rue the day you try to embarrass me in th on this stage. Just you wait. Um, Pretty soon this whole show will be <laughs> under my clutches. <laughs> Ooh, very conniving, uh, very cool. I love that. Keep that up. Uh, it's great, great times, great times. I'm again. <laughs> Sorry for the technical difficulties at the beginning there. That was just way too wacky. But don't worry, everything is back to normal now. And to prove it, we have a completely normal monologue that we wrote just for you. Let's get into it. Hmm. An employee at a Subway sandwich shop in Colorado was warned by state wildlife officials after being caught on camera feeding bread to deer. Well, what was the special of the day? Noah, I don't really think that matters. The guy attracted like 20 deer to the vicinity. Seems like good marketing to me. <laughs> if you must know, it was a meatball sub day. Well, that explains it. A deer can't resist a good meatball sub. How do you know that? I just know things, Matt. Uh, better not to question my ways. <laughs> <laughs> SNL actor Pete Davidson recently apologized to Lieutenant Gre Dan Crenshaw live on the show, whom he compared to a hitman in a porno movie. Mm. <laughs> Crenshaw then roasted Davidson, showing that the two have made up in the end. Political divide eradicated. Mm -hmm. I, personally, I think Davidson got off easy. Anyone who can lose an eye and not look like they're doing a pirate cosplay is someone you do not want to mess with. I thought he was going to kick the crap out of Pete on air. Me too. I was hoping for it. The guy is both charming and menacing at the same time. Somehow it just looks like SNL is trying to save face, though, and protect its own tushy. Yeah. Even though he looks funny, that politician still is a shady dude. He's been seen on some neo-Nazi Facebook groups. Yeesh. Common agenda would never. All right. Now, a new remake of The Grinch came out this weekend to box office success, just proving again that Hollywood is finally out of original ideas. And you know what? Yeah, I'm cool with it. Hey, if it keeps the Sharknado franchise going for another 12 movies, then I'm a happy guy. I will gladly watch everything I loved as a child remade until the day I die. <laughs> Especially if it involves flying sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Haley Baldwin changed her last name on Instagram to Bieber, <gasps> fueling suspicions that the couple secretly eloped back in September. 
It's totally bogus how much attention she's getting for this. Uh, yeah. I did the same thing three years ago, and, and when I legally married a Justin Bieber bobblehead, no one even cared. Oh, and Emerson's students started their own successful slime business, having already made thousands of dollars, which is already thousands more than anyone else at Emerson could hope to make. Uh, also, if you're doing any holiday shopping, please check out my Etsy shop where I sell wads of gum Chewed to look like famous celebrities. My bubblicious Matt Damon is going to sell out soon, so place your orders now. <laughs> I'm still waiting on my Abraham Lincoln one, by the way. Sorry. Talks of reboot of The Office on SNL has gotten VMA students excited. <gasps> they can finally turn their Pam and Jim fan fiction into spec scripts. Oh! Now with the base, uh, with the new movie on the basis of sex coming out, everyone is getting RBG fever. The Garment District is selling out of black robes by the barrelful. And just the other day, an Emerson film boy correctly defined feminism <gasps> in a class discussion. Ooh. Things are moving forward. You know, as a man, I, uh... Man, uh, all this disassociating in the form of monologue jokes has made me hungry for some good old ad revenue. <gasps> I need some cold hard cash commercial stat. Let's go. Well, welcome back to Common Agenda. Today, we are talking all about the, the holiday season! Holiday season, Noah's favorite time of the year. How could I forget? At least I have a favorite time of the year. Oh, well, unlike most of the adult population, seasonal depression apparently does not affect our pal Noah. I, however, will be huddled in a tight cocoon of blankets when not filming Common Agenda or at various holiday greetings. And I'll be trick-or-treating. Noah, you do, you do know that Halloween passed already, right? Yeah, but you can trick-or-treat on any holiday if you believe hard enough and are willing to be arrested. Okay. Anyways, with Veterans Day this past week, what did you do to thank those who served, Noah? Well, I, like many pet owners, took my pet piggy to the vet. <laughs> um, they were open? It's a, it's a federal holiday. Of course. It, it's their day, after all. Oh, no, Noah. Uh, Veterans Day, not Veterinarians Day. <sighs> oh, th that explains a lot. Uh, why, why would anyone want to have a parade for my pet pig, Honky? I mean, he is great, but not like parade great. It depends on who you ask, really. Yeah. I would say that he's parade worthy, actually pork raid worthy, but... <laughs> Moving on, the next big holiday is Thanksgiving. Any fun plans? Uh, and what are you thankful for? Well, uh, I'm not going home, so I might cook a Thanksgiving dinner in Colonial and might even set off the fire alarm so that everyone oh. can be thankful for the warm shelter. Oh, what fun plans. Personally, I'm thankful for the end of the semester being so close. Ooh, I, I can't wait for the thankful fairy to come visit me and leave five dollars under my pillow! Thankful fairy? Noah, don't you mean the tooth fairy? Uh, no, the, the thankful fairy. The like Thanksgiving Santa, you know, the jingle. No. Oh, thankful fairy, oh, thankful fairy, I can't wait for you to come. I, hey! No, I have never once heard that, Noah. Where did you hear that? My parents told me about her as a kid. Oh. I, I, I wrote her letters. And you just believed it? Well, yeah, but at least I know that Santa is fake, at least. He's also a product of Coca-Cola. Uh, well, I'm a Pepsi guy myself, so that explains my clarity of thought. Right. I can't believe those stupid coke drinkers are fooling themselves. Like, no one can fit through a chimney, especially if you eat all those cookies and milk. Also, wouldn't Santa be so constipated from all that dairy? Uh, who, who can deliver all those gifts with a backed up GI tract? Huh. God knows I couldn't. You know, Noah, as a Jew myself, I think, uh, I think that's where I can agree with you. Yes. Being Jewish, uh, I, never I never really understood the appeal of Santa Claus. Uh, and don't even get me started on Rudolph. B what do you have against Rudolph? Well, first off, he has a red nose. And ever since okay. I went to go see Toby the Big Red Nose Clown when I was five, I, I too yearned for a big red nose of my own. It's not fair that Rudolph was just born with them. 
and, and, and others like me have, have had to really work towards it. The government must provide for every- That seems a little off track from the holidays, Noah. Let's avoid the personal backstory unless it makes us likable to the audience, okay? Fine, but, but when I tell my grandma's stroke at the Thanksgiving table story, there shan't be a dry eye in the studio. You guys ready? Okay. No one really cares. <laughs> well, moving on, let's talk about the real holiday for us, Hanukkah. Hanukkah! While not the highest holiday, it falls in the same calendar time as the holiday season, so it has the most commercial appeal. Oh yeah, boy! Let's talk about those eight crazy nights. Well, the story goes that the Jews revolting against their oppressors only had enough oil to light the temple for one day, but it lasted eight. Nothing short of a miracle. But the real miracle of Hanukkah is the eight nights of presents. Uh -huh. Ooh, Christians really played themselves by only having one day of gift giving. Uh, their Messiah might have come, but he only granted them one day of gift giving. Uh, come on, dying on the cross warrants at least three days of free stuff, wouldn't you say? Well, Noah, uh, now we wouldn't want to offend any God fearing Christians oh, out no, there, no, but no, no. Hanukkah is about a lot more than just the gifts. Yeah, like the eating and the drinking, and my annual toenail clipping, uh, firing up the griddle and not having latkes. Oh, oh, yes, potato pancakes, my favorite. Oh, hey, I've got an idea. Uh, let's play dreidel. I, I, I'll beat you all day because I am so skilled. Okay, but dreidel is a game of s chance. I don't see how you would have any more skill than I have. And that's where you're wrong. Uh, come on, buddy, let's get this game going. Noah, we don't have time. We're in the middle of shooting. <sighs> oh, so you're afraid of losing to the dreidel master. <laughs> I'll have you know that apart from LL Cool Jew, my alternate rap name is Dr. Dreidel. <laughs> Fine. We'll battle, but after the show. Anyways, on to the next segment. But first, as we must apply to the rules of a public elementary school, we have to list all the holidays we can because if we talk about one... We have to talk about them all! <coughs> Curse yes. you, PC culture! <laughs> Christmas! Groundhog Day! Boxing Day! Groundhog Day! Groundhog Day! Wait a minute. It's my mom's birthday! Not a holiday. Well, she's my mom, so yes, in fact it is. Uh, Good Friday. A bad Friday. GGI Fridays. April Fool's Day. And that's enough of that. But wait, I, I didn't even get to Groundhog Day. Uh, wait a minute. Huh. Huh. That's interesting. Well, now that the midterm elections are over, it's time to start looking ahead to finals week. No! I want to get into the holiday spirit. I don't have time to study. But you do want to graduate on time, don't you? Well... Yeah, I was hoping I could coast on these non-tuition credits from hosting Common Agenda. Oh, no, Noah, uh, we've been over this. Anyway, we have a few tips so that you can do both. All right. Number one, still studying after your roommate goes to bed? Wrap yourself up in some Primark string lights so you can still see your textbook and get in the mood to decorate the tree. <laughs> Number two, put cinnamon on all your holiday break snacks. Ooh. Just like this. But you are allergic to cinnamon. Well, not that allergic. Uh, all of the rashes are worth it to get that sweet, sweet holiday mouthfeel. All right. Number three, turn your roommate's freezer all the way up so it gets covered in a thick layer of frost. Late night snowball fights are so college. <laughs> <laughs> Tip number four, rig your friend group secret center so that everyone gets your name. Even if you mess up on the test, uh, you'll have a ton of new stuff to ease the pain. <laughs> and the ultimate form of holiday studying. Hot cocoa shots! Oh! oh! How are those gonna help me on my speech comp test? Well, you're, you're just now taking speech comp? Hey, registration is tricky, dude, but I finally made it into the class this semester. Well, once you have a part of your speech memorized, reward yourself with a shot of hot cocoa. Well, uh, sweet! <laughs> It is sweet, but it is also very hot. First, I heat up the water in an electric tea kettle, and then a second round in the microwave. Part of its brown coloration comes from the burnt water. Matt, that's insane. Insanely genius. I have scars from both study sessions. <laughs> Ew. I also have a few scars from M-Chan shows. Do you want to see those? Phew. You really can smell the burnt cocoa. Thank you. This lump is from trying to remember your name. The end of here. What? Uh-huh. Happy holidays, Noah, Nolan, whoever the hell you are. I don't care. Oh. 
Uh, all right. Whoa, uh, that's <laughs> actually pretty cool. Can, can, you, uh, can you squeeze your tongue to find out what we're doing next? Yeah, sir. We have a segment. <laughs> Great. Let's throw it over to Kate. Take wait, it away. Wait, no, Noah, my, my tongue is telling me it's, it's with Matt. But who's Matt? Weird. The only way, there's only one way to find out, I guess. <laughs> Take it away, Matt. All right. <laughs> How did I get to the common? Uh, common agenda, I didn't see you there. Oh my goodness, I am very lost right now, but I have this deep determination because I, this little birdie told me that there was a secret power to winning the Evies, and I'm on a quest to find that. This is Legends of the Lost Common Agenda. Legend has it that long ago, Ralph Waldo Emerson stormed the Boston Commons with troops of up to 100,000. There was no war. They just marched on the Commons for fun. They hid a common agenda with the secret and prophecy of how Common Agenda will win an Evie this year. Common Agenda, where are you? Hello? gotta be around here somewhere. I think the squirrels might have hit it up here. I'm coming! Send down the basket. Sir, I just need to talk. Can we talk? Let me talk to you. Sir. So I just want to let you know that squirrels can talk. We're the ones who can't listen. What do you think about that? Oh. Is this the code? It was Kanye's code, so... This one... This one... This one... Sir! Oh, where, oh, where did my common agenda go? Oh, where, oh, where could it be? Ooh! Is this the clue? Is this the meaning of life? Did I find it? Everything comes from the earth. Oh. Fountain from friends. Show me the way to the common agenda. I found it! This is very anticlimactic, but we got it! This is an ancient document from like 3000 BC, surprisingly still in MLA. Long ago, the gods looked down on the grounds of Emerson Campus, Emerson College Campus, which is just six buildings in a row. And the gods said that common agenda should remain on the Emerson Channel for the rest of eternity. Or may Ralph Waldo Emerson come back as a giant zombie beaver and destroy the world. That's a horrifying image. Jesus. Well, at least we know that they can't cancel Common Agenda or else the world will end. So, I guess I'm stuck in this job for ever. Well, today I am incredibly honored to conduct this interview with one of Boston's most influential people, uh, Catherine Switzer. In 1967, Catherine was the first woman to register and run in the Boston Marathon, uh, carving the path for all women to participate in her footsteps. Here she is, live on the phone to chat with us. Hi, Catherine. Hey, how are you doing? Great to be here. Oh, it's so Hi. good to have you. How is everything? How are you? Welcome to Common Agenda. Good. I'm really good. I'm talking to you from uh, the Hudson Valley of New York, where we've got 18 inches of snow on the ground. I don't know about you guys, but I remember this many times falling down like this uh, a few days before the Boston Marathon, and we were always scared out of our wits that the course wouldn't even be clear. So. Oh, my goodness. Very reminiscent of many Boston marathons. <laughs> yeah, I bet. 18 inches, you said? Yeah. 
Oh, that's insane. Um, well, we have a few questions about the Boston Marathon and everything, and we were so excited to talk to you. But uh, what inspired you to take such a huge leap and, and run the marathon in the first place? Well, I was like many of your students. I was, uh, I was only 19 years old when I was mm -hmm. training up for the Boston Marathon, and my coach didn't believe any woman anywhere could ever run a marathon, despite all the evidence to the contrary, including mm. a woman in Boston, Roberta Gibb, who jumped out of the bushes the year before. And oh, had yeah. run. he just didn't believe it. And um, so I was angry with him. And I said, you know, hey, I know I can do this. And he said, I'll tell you what, you do it in practice with me. Um, I'll be the first person to take you to Boston. So we trained our brains out. Um, and um, one day we went to, out to run 26 miles. I said, let's run 31 miles, <laughs> um, making sure we can do it at Boston. And uh, he passed out at the end of the workout. <laughs> and he oh. became an absolute evangelist for women's running and helped me sign up for the race. So, you know, it was, a, it was first a, uh, the inspiration was to prove to him, my coach, who I admired so much, um, that I could do it. And the second thing is is that um, I was really just a kid who, who wanted to run a marathon. I wasn't trying to prove anything after that. And it wasn't until um, the official attacked me in the race and tried to throw me out of the race did everything change. My coach said I had to sign up for the race, that it was a serious event. Um, I signed my name with my initials. I didn't do that to defraud anybody, right. but they thought that, that KV was a guy, not a woman, and they accepted my entry. Um, and the official then lost his temper when he saw that I was a girl because he thought I was, you know, making a fun of his race. So um, my boyfriend decked him, and I went on to finish. <laughs> you know, it's a funny yeah. story in the retelling, but honestly, it was um, a very traumatic incident at the time. But it changed millions of women's lives because it inspired me so much to devote my life to creating opportunities and change. So, you know, that's, that's the story. And, um, and who would have imagined what's happened all these years later? Look at, look at you now. It's incredible. And I had no idea you were just our age when you did that. Yeah. Yeah. So 19. That's why I wanted to be on your show and to tell students out there that, that you know, th they don't often set out to make history. But if they kind of keep the right track, um, stay true to what they believe in, and then when they see a social injustice, right. you know, like when the official attacked me, I knew I had to finish that race. I knew I had to change the system. And, um, and I spent my life doing it. So right. you, you never know what life will throw at you. And uh, even at an early age, you should stop and take a look at some of the social injustices around you, pick them up, and make a change. And I also, I have a, a question actually about that incident. I don't think there's anyone on our campus who didn't see that now infamous video uh, going around whenever the Boston Marathon is about to be run. But yes, there's an official that comes out and tries to stop you from finishing the race. Did you ever get a chance to confront or talk to that official at the end of it? Well, not at the end of it, because he wouldn't speak to me for about five years. Oh, wow. Um, yes, he proceeded to have me disqualified from the race and expelled from the Athletic Federation. But that didn't do anything more than inspire me. And right. other women uh, joined with me. The men were wonderful to me. All the men in the race were great. Um, it's just the angry official. And finally, we legislated and got women official in the Boston Marathon in 1972. Okay. And the official had to welcome us into the race. And yeah. after that, he realized he was wrong. He never said he was sorry. But we became best of friends. Can you imagine this? Wow. And for many, many years, we would do talks and speeches and interviews together. And I was also with him just a few hours before he died. Wow. And um, I think that it's really important. The other lesson from this is, is that life really is too short not to forgive. And it really, you can learn so much And c when you're working with somebody, even in adversity, to overcome um, differences of, mm -hmm. of a belief or differences of opportunity and work together for positive change. Wow, that sounds like an uh, Academy Award winning movie right there. It is an Academy Award winning movie. Anybody wants to be a film director, I'm available. Perfect. <laughs> of course, we'll, we'll hit you up. Well, so, so clearly, fitness and marathon running is still a huge part of your life. Uh, you look amazing, by the way, through the phone. We can definitely see you. Um, <laughs> And so you're, and, and, and that passion led you to cre to form a two, uh, 261 Fearless. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, first of all, everybody should stay active all their, their whole lives as much as they can. I ran the Boston Marathon again last year for my 50th anniversary. I was the only woman who's ever run a marathon 50 years after she first did. Wow. That's awesome. You know, 
you know, it's not it's not unusual to see women 70 or 80 or 90 running marathons, but it is unusual uh, for a woman 50 years after she first did. So that was that was cool. But what was in, more interesting to me um, was was realizing that the more you do with your body physically, the the better you age. And so everybody out there listening, you guys and. At uh, university level, you should keep your fitness all, the, all your life. Um, also, what's amazing is the bib number the official tried to pull off me was 261. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was only three digits for 45 years until suddenly, because of the Internet, people were writing to me and saying that that number makes them feel fearless. And they were pinning it on their backs during races or, or even getting themselves tattooed with it. Oh. So we turned 261 into two. And they always used the word fearless. It made them feel fearless. So we turned it into a nonprofit called 261 Fearless because we're using the power of transformation of running to help change women's lives around the world. Most, most women around the world have no opportunities whatsoever. I mean, we live in a dream world here and universities in the United States. And mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do is show women if they just put one foot in front of the other, they can feel empowered uh, and full of self-esteem and confidence. And that translates to every area of their life. So. That's what we're doing with 261 Fearless. We're out there starting clubs around the world, and we're already in nine countries. And um, we're gonna we're gonna make some we're gonna make some positive difference. Wow, that is uh, so amazing! And thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Uh, that is all the time we have for you right now. But uh, we'd like to thank you one more time, Catherine Switzer. Thank you for being on Common Agenda. Catherine, it was incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Go to 261fearless.org. 261fearless.org. Got awesome. it. Awesome. Okay. Take care, you guys. Bye, Good luck Catherine. with the show. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. That was so cool. Well, that brings our show to a close, everyone. Noah, where, where, where'd you go? Huh? Noah. Huh? Yeah, I'm right here. Uh, sorry. Uh, I was just getting some cookies and milk. I, I, I spilled the milk on the way. Yeah, well, so, <laughs> what are you doing? It's not even close to Christmas. So, well, cookies and milk are for Santa. Not for me, they aren't. Uh, you know, I always leave them out for the thankful fairy. You know, it's, it's my way of giving thanks. Uh, wait, wait, a, wait, wait a second, hold on. What is it? Giving thanks. Thanksgiving. Ah! Uh, <laughs> I finally get it now! Noah, you have a lot of weird holiday traditions, but I kind of love it. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> but I'm really thankful for you. All right, well, it's time to end the show. But you, you <laughs> promised me we'd play dreidel. All right, we'll play dreidel. C come on, let's go sit over here. All right. Well, we've clearly planned this. Yeah, let's see. So, don't tell me you're one of those seasonal elitists, are you? Where you just celebrate, uh, just where you just don't uh, celebrate St. Patrick's Day in August like I want to, man. No, uh, from what I've seen of you at parties, you celebrate St. Patrick's Day every weekend. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. But what I mean is, no, but what I mean is it's not even Thanksgiving yet. This isn't our Hanukkah episode, it's our holiday episode. And we have to come up with some way to combine all the holiday celebrations into one. Hmm. Well, seems like a lot. Uh, how about two? Two seems reasonable. What do you have in mind? Well, how about we spin the dreidel and for however, however long it spins, we... We'll have to list things that we're thankful for. Sounds like a plan. All right, you go first. Thank you. Uh, my mom, my dad, my dog who's dead, my sister, um, the New York Kids Theater, my family. Wow, that was very interesting. Uh, and I thought that I would be covered under the friends category, you know? Oh, did I, <laughs> I don't think I said friends, but you know, all my friends too, and you, Noah. Well, we're, we're friends, right? Yeah, spin the dreidel. I would hope that we're friends. Okay. I'm thankful for my friends, my burgeoning rap career, all the rappers who have influenced me, especially Moneybag Yo, my pet pig Honky, and uh, all the wonderful sponsors at Emerson Channel, and uh, uh, oh, I wish I could have eight times the holiday bonus for Hanukkah. Oh, and don't forget, my co-host, Matt. Aw, host Noah, I'm the host. You're, you're the co-host, remember? Come on, Matt. It's the holidays, please. Fine, fine. From our host, Noah Bender. <laughs> and from my co-host, Matt Finkelstein, <laughs> and all of us on behalf of Common Agenda, we wish you a happy holiday. Woo! Best holidays ever!